Hey there guys, so I just made an impulse purchase of this Minis Forum BD795M motherboard CPU combo thing. So what this is, is a MATX motherboard that has a mobile CPU attached to it. Specifically, it's the Ryzen 9 7945HX. This is a 16 core part, and at the price point that I got this system for, or rather this motherboard for, it seemed like a pretty rock solid deal, but there are some very obvious limitations limitations even when you just look at the board on the box but let's take it out of here and take a look at the actual board inside so if we take this board out of the packaging here very quickly you start to see the differences in this board versus most other motherboards that you'll find on the market today while it is matx there are some configuration differences for one since it is a mobile cpu it is soldered onto there it's not socketed and another key thing is the fact that it uses an lga 17 cooler so even though it's an AMD system it's using the Intel cooling mount and I'm personally not a fan of that because of the fact that I have a ton of AMD coolers but I don't have any spare Intel ones but another configuration difference here is the fact that we have a much more limited expandability we do have a 16x PCIe gen 4 connector and around it we have two m.2 slots but when we bring it up to the side here and take a look at the IO you'll very quickly quickly notice that it is extremely limited. We only have four USB ports to work with and two of them are USB 2.0. We do have integrated graphics here, but it is just the AMD 610M. So not exactly a powerhouse at all. It's just meant for you to be able to display things and it does light hardware acceleration for video playback. Outside of that, we also have Soden memory, which is really the biggest issue that I have with it because of the fact that that means you are stuck using JDEX speeds and timing. So memory latency is also going to be a problem here it really is a bare bones configuration and you are also going to have to source your own wi-fi card if you want to have built-in wi-fi but it does come with the mounting that you need if you want to set up some wireless antennas on it and besides having two sata ports there isn't really much more expandability here but i am going to be putting 96 gigabytes of ram since i have two 48 gigabyte sticks that i can stick in here and one thing i should mention is that this system by default is going to run this memory at 50 200 mega transfers and that's really slow the highest that this memory will be able to go up to is 5600 and thankfully in the bios you can go in there and configure it to 5600 and i would recommend you do that because it will claw back just a tiny little bit of memory latency there but like i mentioned i don't have any spare intel coolers the only intel cooler that i have is currently being used in my system so i pretty much rebought the cooler that i have currently in my system that being the thermal right perlis assassin 120 SE. This works perfectly fine for my i9 12900K system. So I see no reason that it won't do a good job with this lower TDP part. And I'm really curious to see what the CPU performance is going to be here in comparison to my desktop. If the performance is better though, I'm still very hesitant to replace my setup with something like this because of that limited IO. And the real deal breaker here is the fact that there just is no USB-C port. If there was a USB-C port, then at least I could hook up a USB-C dock and get some more expandability out of it. But that just is not the case here. And I kind of really need that because the card reader that I use hooks up through USB-C. But here is the system all set up and I even have the B580 graphics card hooked up to it. This is around the limit of what I would recommend for a GPU for a system like this. Well, you could go higher with something like a 4070 Ti or even all the way up to a 7800 XTX from AMD. The limited expandability here really makes it tough to recommend unless you're using this for a very specific purpose. And you can really see just how limited the expandability is. I have a wireless mouse and keyboard combo thing hooked up to this system right now, and that is already using one fourth of all of the USB ports that we have available to us. This just does not make this that, that functional of a system for a workstation setup and that's pretty disappointing to see. If it had at least doubled the USB ports that it has, even just having twice as many of the USB 3.0 ports would make a huge difference and would legitimately make me consider using this as my day-to-day -day system if it ends up being as powerful as I think it's going to end up being. But man, that limited I.O. is just brutal to look at. It's interesting to me that they went down this direction with the I.O. for the MATX version because there is an ITX version of this motherboard that originally came out first. 
and that one has a USB-C port as well as two USB 2.0 ports and two USB 3. So this has less connectivity than the smaller board and I don't really know why. But it definitely seems like a bad move because it really limits what you can do with a system like this. Yeah, there's USB hubs that you can use that will turn one of those ports into multiple, but the USB-C is really important considering the amount of devices that use USB-C. It just seems like a very odd move. But here I am booted into the desktop and you can see on Task Manager that we do have all 16 cores and 32 threads available to us. You can see we do have 96 gigabytes of RAM and you could also see that the memory speed that it's running at is 5600 mega transfer. Like I said, I do recommend that you do do that if you get this system because that's going to make a slight boost in terms of the memory latency but at least running a test of ADA 64 the memory latency is still in the 90s for me and that is pretty brutal but let's open up Cinebench R23 and Cinebench 2024 to see what the performance is like on those two benchmarks and right off the bat it is a chart topper for Cinebench R23 its multi-core performance is topping the chart with a pretty large gap gap in comparison to my i9 2900k that's not really that surprising at all it does have more cores and more threads to work with and it's all full-size cores we're not talking about any e cores or anything like that it's 16 full-size cores and the performance that we're getting out of them does look pretty spectacular of course on the single core performance it ends up lagging behind the i9 that i have but not by by much it's really to the point where i would have trouble distinguishing what the performance difference would be in just single threaded tasks. Cinebench 2024 has even more impressive results, where again, the Ryzen 9 7945HX on this motherboard ends up topping the chart, beating out the Apple and M1 Ultra. Of course, there are newer generations of the M series, but this is just going off of what Cinebench has in their own testing, but it does also end up beating out my i9 12900K that is fourth on that list. Of course, when we take a look at the single core performance, we see a repeat of what we saw with Cinebench R23, where the i9 ends up taking the lead in single core performance, topping out even the Apple M1 Ultra and M1 Max. But the 7945HX ends up tying with the M1, is just slightly behind the M1 Ultra and M1 Max. Overall, not bad numbers at all. But what does this translate to in real world performance? Well, in gaming, you're going to get some pretty great results. Of course, in this scenario, we're going to end up being GPU bound at 99 percent of the time but that's realistically how the vast majority of people are going to be because i don't think you managed to camp out outside of a micro center to pick up one of the three 5090s that are available the vast majority of people out there are playing on rtx 3060 level graphics cards so because of that you're likely to be perfectly fine with this and realistically speaking, while using this, what I've realized is that it is a pretty incredible performer where we can see clock speeds during gaming reaching around 5.4 gigahertz. The biggest limiting factor is the fact that our memory is limited because of the fact that the bandwidth that it has is just significantly lower than what you can get on a regular desktop setup. But you're also saving quite a lot of money here. The cost of th this motherboard CPU combo is lower than just buying an in individual 16 core CPU from AMD from Zen 4 or Zen 5 and that doesn't even include the motherboard and those motherboards could get pretty expensive though this is an MATX and chances are whatever the cheapest desktop MATX motherboard that you get is going to have better IO than this and it's really the IO that is the biggest issue that I have with this platform because the CPU itself is a great performer Adobe Premiere ran like a dream on here thanks to the fact that it's also paired with the B580 that does an incredible job when it comes to video production. And if the IO configuration was better, this would be a very formidable option for making a low budget powerhouse of an editing setup. But as it stands, I really can't find any way to make this work for a workstation, at least for me. If you have limited peripherals and you're mostly working with a NAS, then things are perfectly fine. But normally I end up taking all of the video footage from my camera over an SD card that I plug into 
a USB C dock that has an SD card reader on it. And that just doesn't work on this because they just decided to not put the USB C. If this could have the USB C, it really could end up being a replacement for my setup. But because it doesn't have that, it becomes a lot more limiting. But as a home server setup, this is really, really great as an option. But again, you end up running into the issue of limited expandability here. But if you don't need a GPU for what you're doing, you do have a full 16x PCIe slot that you can do whatever you want with and you do have integrated graphics so you don't need to worry about potentially having to dig up a old graphics card if you ever need to do any troubleshooting. There are workarounds to getting this to work better as a workstation. I mean I could just transfer over the footage to my NAS and then from the NAS I can transfer everything over to the system itself because it does have 2.5 gigabit ethernet but that's more of a slowdown because I have to transfer it from my PC over to the NAS and then from the NAS transfer it over to that and that's really just not an ideal setup but that is a me situation I'm sure if you had multiple editors working off of one NAS and you're trying to do a budget setup this does work pretty decently for it but I think that a server application is really its most ideal situation I do also want to point out that the cooler that I went with is way overkill for this thing you do not need a dual fan dual tower cooler like this and if anything it makes things more inconvenient because it is pretty much grinding up against the graphics card right now. Now that's not going to cause any shorting or anything because it does have a backplate, but it still makes me uncomfortable. But overall, I feel like there is a letdown in this platform and it just comes down to the IO. The lack of expandability there, the limited amount of SATA ports, the limited amount of NVMe slots, the limited amount of PCIe slots, effectively means that this is a very specific purpose system. If you're looking to make a gaming system that has 16 cores and still has great performance, this will do the job at a pretty decent price. And if you're looking for a 16 core home server, well, it's a pretty great option because it is a top performer. But realistically, if you need 16 cores and they don't need to be the highest performing things ever, you can look in the market for a 3950X, pick up an AM4 motherboard, and you're likely to have more USB ports, more PCIe slots, more NVMe slots, and more SATA ports to work with. It's definitely an interesting board, but I am having trouble finding a use case for it. I am going to be doing some more testing with it. I'm actually going to make a home server with it because I want to know what the performance of something like Plex or Jellyfin is like with the Radeon 610M because if it can end up being a great performer with that this might actually finally end up replacing the old Celeron that I use for my home server. That's an Unraid server that has eight hard drives hooked up to it and at this point a lot of them are getting up there in age. The vast majority are eight terabytes some of them are ten terabytes and I've been thinking that this might be the year that I finally make a big upgrade and move the hardware over from an old Celeron 3930 onto something far more powerful, but I do need the iGPU to be able to do the hardware acceleration since sometimes people on my server do need the transcoding. It's not always, a lot of the times direct play works perfectly fine, but because it's such a wide variety of different devices that people use, sometimes the transcoding is needed. And if there's any issues there with the AMD system, it's going to be a deal breaker because I need the PCIe slot for the hard drives. So it's definitely going to be a make or break test there and I'm very excited to do that. But as it stands, do I recommend this? Only in very specific use cases. Please pay attention to the IO configuration. Please pay attention to how you're going to do your expandability here and just know that there are some major limitations here. But the price point is really hard to beat, especially when I bought it. I picked it up because it was on sale for $400 on Amazon. That was about a $70 discount from its normal price that was identical to the price that it had on the official Minis Forum website, but it had a $70 coupon on. And at $400, it is really competitive, but does it matter about saving $400 if it just cannot be used for the purpose that you want it for? That's why you gotta be very careful with that. But let me know what you guys think of a motherboard like this. Are you excited by something like this? Do you feel like they cut too many corners to make this? Or is this something that actually excites you and you look forward to picking it up? I'm very curious to see what the sentiment is around this thing. But I'll catch you guys in the next one.